All right. Well, I want to welcome everyone out to the uh, understanding the uh, IRA, otherwise known as the Inflation Reduction Act, um, uh, and specifically focused on the Efficient Home Improvement Tax Credit with some focus on the uh, renewable energy residential tax credits as well for this session. Um, before we get started, um, I wanted to announce that at least 30% of Green Home Institute members are women. Many of them are directly related to the construction uh, industry, such as Raiders, design, design build, development uh, as well. So we want to celebrate this. Um, for today, uh, International Women's Day and the uh, na uh, International, I believe, International Women in Construction Week. Uh, very exciting. We're uh, and 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 congratulations to all of our members, uh, and well, thanks to all of our members and their support, and many of the women in construction throughout um, the world. Um, and you can check them all out on our website to learn more about um, all of our members, uh, all of our female members. But you know, this is who GHI members are, and this is what GHI members do. So can you learn more at greenhomeinstitute.com.org, uh, become um, a member. All right, again, understanding the IRA, Efficient Home Improvement Tax Credit. Before we get started, a huge thanks to all of our sponsors, who uh, many of them have Great products that are going to be approved for Inflation Reduction Act dollars that are going to help you build more sustainable and greener. So check them out. Before we get started, if you don't know us, we're the Green Home Institute. The Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. Today, I will not only be your moderator, but I will also be your uh, speaker. My name is Brett Little. I'm the education manager here. Uh, along with that is the uh, the rest of our team. We're a small but mighty team. Uh, over to your left uh, and the photo right is our executive director, Jose Reyna, who you can reach out to for memberships and partnerships and sponsorships. And in the middle is Eliza, our new uh, program manager, um, who's also going to school for uh, construction. So congrats to her too. And uh, she is heading up our green building certification programming. So please contact her if you're looking to start a project. Now, before we get started, again, uh, all of uh, our sessions are typically approved for multiple continuing education units, as well as the Certified Green Home Professional designation in energy for this session, as well as Certified Passive House um, Consultant, uh, CPHC through FIAS. Check for the five-digit code that will be sent to you within the survey um, as well. So again, we're going to be talking about the Inflation Reduction Act Efficient Home Improvement Tax Credit. And um, um, you know, one thing to know about this tax credit, it, it is not new. This is an uh, old tax credit. It has been inflated, if you will. It has been improved. It has been bolstered uh, and extended and expanded in many different ways. And just to give you a little bit of background, I have personally used this tax credit um, for a project I uh, got Green Star certified, my own home that I lived in for a while. Uh, and I have used the renewable energy tax credit that we're going to talk about briefly as well, personally. So I've used these tax credits. I haven't used the Inflation Reduction Act version because I did it before the IRA. Am I bitter? A little bit. I'm a little angry, but I'll try I'll try to be cool. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm here to tell you that they they work. And I also wanted to give you the exciting news that right now we're broadcasting to you live from a 100% solar powered off the grid. Uh, we'll be feeding the grid soon. I uh, got a little bit of energy going there with the dishwasher going, but 100% off the grid right now broadcasting to you live. So I'm really doing it. So that's me, and um, my particular uh, home also is certified platinum within Pearl certification, DOE home energy score of 10, uh, and uh, pending an update to the version four Green Star uh, certification. So I can do it, you can do it, we can help your clients do it, we can all do it, uh, and that's why we're here to help. Um, one thing that's important to know is that I, uh, you know, the information is not being uh, is not meant to serve as any tax advice here. Is not. Any guarantees of any tax credit you or your clients will receive, make sure that you or they consult their tax advisors uh, before moving forward and assuming that they'll get anything uh, based on anything that we say here. 
Um, one thing to know is that the uh, we are doing more and more series on the Inflation Reduction Act as we learn more, as time goes on, and as we bring in more speakers. And so we have an IRA playlist that is this will be added, and we're going to be building out more IRA uh, items as we go through 2032. I guess that's you know that's kind of how long it goes. Some things 2035. So we'll be adding more as we learn more. We've got a great sort of introductory. Uh, to the IRA, both the benefits and the concerns as a broad approach to how it works with housing. And then we did a very focused session on uh, the 45L energy modeling credit as well. So we have a link to that. And then on March 29th, we're going to be doing the DOE Zero Energy Ready Version 2 program, which is approved for Inflation Reduction Act dollars for single family, multifamily, and townhomes. So I hope you will uh, join us as well. So here's the list, right? Here it is. This is what we're talking about today. I mean, this is it. Um, it's not too uh, uh, complex. It's not that exciting. <laughs> uh, one thing, and this is from, uh, this is one of my favorite links that I find myself sharing almost twice or three times a week. So I will share it with you all again to honor that. But uh you know, on the left side of the list is sort of the 2022 numbers here. And over here is 2023 and on. And so it's just kind of comparing what was, if you're submitting your taxes now and you did energy efficiency last year, your clients, tell them to get paid, get their money, as long as they hadn't got it before. And then here is what's coming. You know, here's what's new coming down the line. And so we're going to go into a little more detail uh, of this list and how to plan your project um, you know, with that. Um, one thing that you need to know is that uh, they've designed this unlike the previous one where it was one and done, right? So I green certified one home, I got 500 bucks in like 2012, and then I did another home and they're like, nope, no money for you. Like totally different new home, couldn't do it. It was one and done, very archaic. Stone Age law. So they fixed it, right? To some extent, could have been better. But inflate, you know, they fixed it. And so now it's kind of designed the way people do projects. We don't, you know, most normal people uh, don't do projects all at once. We'd like them to. Um, but it's usually phased in over time based on their budgets and what they can do. And so this is an annual credit that they can continue to receive, uh, you know, based on over time um, improvements. And the maximum amount, um, to my knowledge, every year is, to my understanding, is thirty-two hundred dollars, twelve hundred of which goes to sort of your your shell improvements, your wall assembly improvements, and electrical, and then two thousand, which goes towards your um, heating, cooling, and water heating uh, as well. And those can be, uh, to my knowledge and my reading and and where we're at now, and this could change tomorrow and when the IRS releases new rules, you know, that's up to, you know, uh, that. So so anyway, that's up to 3,200 and it's split between 12 for the particular shell and 2,000 for uh, the, um, the other items. Um, lost my... Uh... So one thing to know uh, about uh, about this is this is a non-refundable credit. So first of all, it's not a rebate, and we'll talk about the rebates in a second. Um, and it's it's uh, it's it's you know it's not something that is guaranteed if you or your client do not have a tax liability. Now, I was pleasantly surprised to learn that I was able to benefit from the solar tax credit in 2021 and now in 2022. I didn't realize that I had benefited from it because there was so much going on in 2021 with taxes that I made the assumption that I didn't. And being, personally, I'll admit being in a lower tax credit, I went out and assumed that even under the IRA, they didn't fix solar. So people in lower tax credits, back brackets could never benefit from it. And I'll publicly admit I was wrong about that because I was able to benefit from it uh, and I didn't know that. And so now I do see personally that even people in lower tax brackets can benefit from this. So, you know, for those who go and get solar they and, and, and the home energy efficient ones, it all gets entered in 
on form 5695. Unfortunately, that form has not been updated for when you go to submit next year. So that's only for the next the previous year. But basically what happens is, you know, people are looking at their income and they're looking at whether they have kids and that's all getting factored in. And then what's left after that is their taxes that are still owed. And sometimes there are credits that knock that down. And, and if certain credits don't knock that down, then the solar or geothermal or now home energy tax credits can start to knock that down, you know, bringing it closer to zero. And then from there, any other benefits can add positive. So basically what you or your clients want to do is go to your tax advisor, take a look at your taxes from twenty this past year coming up, and then say, what if I did add solar? What would that do? Where would this be on the line? If you need that funding to determine if you can pay for the project, that's important. I was in a you know position where I wasn't counting on it. I didn't need it, thankfully. Um, but uh, but but and I didn't think I would ever benefit from it, but it 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 was beneficial. So I so I want to say that it does work. You can take advantage of it. Your clients can take advantage of it possibly. And so have them, you know, look at form five, six, nine, five, have them look at the credit. Uh, have them look at their past taxes and sit down and see, hey, is this a benefit to me to to take advantage of it? And they may be surprised to find that they thought they didn't qualify financially and that possibly that they do. And so I, I wanted to say I was I was wrong. All right. So I want to hear from you all a little bit like what um, what uh, what have you all done? And so here is a quick poll that I want to launch. So is have you or your clients that you work with benefited from these credits before on your projects? And so the bottom one is if you are an individual who are benefiting, the top one is if you're kind of out there doing projects with your clients uh, and that they have potentially got the credit. You know, I called up my solar installers yesterday I had a couple of things to talk to them about. And I was like, I got the credit. I did. You know, I'm going to go out and speak if you want me to speak for you. Uh, because it worked, you know, the solar installers, they always, they almost put those credits. It's almost like, you know, it, it's borderline concerning to when they put the credit into the bill that you have to pay them. And then they deduct it out. It's almost like, that's not entirely true, you know. Uh, so we always give them a little bit of grief when the solar installers do that. But uh, in my case, you know, it, it was successful. So here's uh, the end of the poll here. Um, and it looks like a majority of you just really aren't sure or you never or you know you haven't. And a couple of you have benefited and some of you have benefited, um, you know, personally from that. So hopefully those numbers, you know, can go um, can go up from there. All right. So um, now. There are other rebates coming. There was a question here right at the top, right? Do I know when? So, 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 well, let me back up here. So, uh, one of our favorite ways of looking at the HERA rebate is through our good friends at the Rewiring um, America uh, calculator. Now, I do need to disclose to you that you need to take this calculator with a grain of salt because I think personally, and I'll admit it, I've told them this in an email, so I'll say it out loud, that I feel like it over, it over, uh, it over projects what you or your clients might get. It's a little bit uh, optimistic, in my opinion. So I just want to, you know, not, you know, all of a sudden you put numbers in and, you know, big $22,000, $30,000 show up, right? And you're just like, just take it with a grain of salt, because number one, and to the question here is, we don't know, first of all, what you know first of all there's still irs and doe regulations that are open up for public comment to my knowledge that are asking about this incentive and then you know second then the state has to adopt it and they get to do something with it and change it now i know our governor in michigan just put it into law and i think it just got signed in so now what does that mean when it gets adopted by our energy office i don't know there are other states i think blatantly are going to drag out and refuse this so i'm Sorry to hear you all who are, have to deal with that, you know, make your voices heard. So anyway, this is a good way to start getting prepared for you or your low to moderate income homeowners who need a little bit more than the other tax credit, the 3,200. It's not much. This is much more. 
And so you can go in, you can enter in data about your house, and then it kind of tells you, hey, this stuff is coming. Here's what to look for. Here's what to get ready for. I hesitate showing it to people because I don't want this to lead to inaction to say, oh, there's all this other money coming. Therefore, this year I'm going to do nothing, going to keep burning more carbon. And, and so I, but I also understand people have limited income these days. And so I'm showing it to you, telling you, get engaged at your energy office, get engaged at your state, tell them to adopt this and get this money out the door and make it, you know, so equitably people who don't normally get access to this money. Uh, especially in communities of color and low-income communities who typically get left out of this stuff, make your voice heard and make sure these people can get access to this because everyone you know, deserves a fair chance at these big dollars. So we're not talking about those today, but they are coming. Uh, and the two, to my knowledge, cannot work together. And then you've got your utility companies, right? So you've got your utility rebates. Uh, so we've got Consumers Energy here across the state of Michigan who's giving out dollars and boosted dollars for low-income residents. You've probably got an electric or gas utility as well. And if you're using the rebates from the utilities, you have to deduct it. Uh, the, your clients have to deduct it um, from their tax credit. So if they're getting, um, you know, if if the if the if the job was two thousand dollars and they got a thirty percent rebate on it, and they got a tax credit for a thousand of it, then the job is only really a thousand dollars. And they're only getting a 30% rebate on that. So they have to deduct these types of rebates. Uh, we've got gas companies got rebates. So DTE gas is gas over here in West Michigan. Again, you've probably got your own utility rebates wherever you are. You've got city programs that are doing things. And we have to give our uh, hats off to the city of Holland, who's giving out like, uh, I believe, like up to $30,000 in efficiency rebates, free home energy evaluations, uh, big bucks for heat pumps and heat pump water heaters and energy efficiency. And once again, if the city or county is giving out a rebate, you have to deduct that amount before you or your client can claim any credits from the 25C tax credit. And if this covers all of the cost, which in the case this one doesn't, then you definitely can't use any of those, those tax credits. You've got the community action agencies it's what we call uh, one of the country's, the DOE's best kept secrets. They're out there in the community, giving people up to some time, well, upwards of $10,000 of energy efficiency support, and they're getting more money pumped into them. They're usually county-based. So again, if you have people that are struggling financially, this money is available now. And if the, again, if it's covering most of the cost, you can't use the rebate to pair with it. But if it's covering some of the cost, you know, maybe it can help out. Um, so these are all, you know, all over the place and ignore that link at the bottom. You've got your green banks, right? There's a whole green bank coalition, right? And I've personally used this to fund a project, right? They, they give you funding for solar home energy efficiency improvements. Usually it's unsecured credit. We've got our friends at Michigan saves one of the best nationally well-known green banks in the country. And I've personally used them and seen many have used them. If you're funding a project this way, then you or your clients get all the rebates because you're not you're not getting any incentive here. It's just a financing mechanism. So that helps you finance the project and then you get the rebate back. And sometimes these folks will re-amortize the loan. So uh, I know uh, uh, Michigan Saves and many other funders like them will take the solar tax credit and reapply it to the loan to knock it down and knock your payments down. Maybe it helps with the interest. I can't say for sure. But I've personally used this mechanism. Then if you're a Green Home Institute member, and if you haven't become one yet, become one, you're automatically a member of the Clean Energy Credit Union. Many of you didn't know this. And so they have uh, these green home loan improvements, solar improvements, car improvements. And again, these can be coupled with the tax credits. And then here's a mechanism I've used is the mortgage industry. I've refinanced my house. Uh, especially when the homes were lower interest, when the time lower interest rates. And I used that to pay for my green upgrades and refinanced it into the home and used it as an equity building and got 3% value bump. And then I could apply for the, you know, uh, at the time there were no tax credits available, but I could have applied had I used it now to do that. So there's a green choice mortgage, which brings additional funds, or there's just your traditional construction loan that you or your clients can use 
to do this. And it works very well, you know, using it to finance solar and all sorts of things. And some banks are even making it easier to do this. And some other banks are giving out like money to have a lead home or to put solar up, you know, go ask your bank. Ask, they have these ESG goals, environmental social governance. If they have these goals, a lot of times they're giving out all this stuff because they want these mortgages. So this is what we call braided funding. You can use A plus B plus C plus D plus the 25 home C tax credit to help you and your clients make a successful, sustainable project and fund it, you know, in some sort of mechanism by using a couple of these. And we're bringing on more financing uh, all the time. All right, so let's get into it. So one of my uh, favorite uh, sites that I just recently found, uh, and there's the link down there, so I'm not gonna post it into the chat because I don't have access to it real quick, is the energystar.gov about federal tax credits. They go into detail about all of these credits and they have on this link uh, a spot for the homeowners, which we're going to get into right now, then the builders, which we've talked about and we're going to talk about again, and then the commercial building owners. And we're going to be doing some sessions again on multifamily, uh, so 45L and 179D uh, and a couple other things. So they have all sorts of great resources here, and they're building those out. Uh, so you have to check, kind of check these dates to see when they were last updated. Um, but with that being said, let's focus in on the homeowner one here. Um, so again, when you go to this homeowner one, it kind of gives you the, the that list I showed you from the DOE, right? The sort of drop down list at the beginning. This kind of breaks it down in more detail per item that you or your clients can receive. And so let's say we go and um, click on, uh, uh, and are you guys, seeing my, hopefully you guys are seeing my screen. Um, the link is not showing. Yeah, strange. Let me uh, see if I can reshare that here. Okay, so let's click on heat pump water heaters, right? We're gonna talk more about those. And when you click on it, uh, one of these links, you're gonna get uh, sort of a list like you're seeing here that's sort of integrated into their website and sortable by brands and fuels and volume and a few other items. And then you're going to kind of be able to look at all the things that are improved, approved for the Inflation Reduction Act dollars. Now, some of these are nice lists like this. Some of these are like Excel lists you can download and sort through. I believe the, uh, the EPA's intent, Energy Star's intent is to build it all out eventually like this is my 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 understanding. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But I found that to be a very helpful uh, resource, but in some ways also not helpful. And I'll talk to you about where, where it's not. So again, I just want to be clear that we're going to get into some technical information. But to be clear, this is not a technical webinar. We do not have time to discuss a lot of uh, technical things um, in, and educate you specifically on the technology here. So we have other resources you can go and reference. We have our comparing residential and energy ratings and scores uh, that we discuss. Um, and so we'll we'll redo that this year and you'll see an update. We also have our seven, eight part series, the basics of residential green building and remodeling, where I go into significant detail and give you other resources. And again, we're going to redo this entire session in the summer or the fall this year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so those are good reference links for you. We also, if you go to our YouTube channel and click on the playlists, you'll see there's a whole energy and zero energy uh, playlist. And so you can go there and take a super deep dive into certain topics uh, that you're interested in uh, to learn more about uh, what to do, why to do it. And here, we're just kind of really giving you the high level and then talking about what um, tax credits may be available. All right, so those of you who have followed this know about the home energy efficiency pyramid. And so the whole idea is to help you organize you or help you and your you your you organize your clients' projects to be most effective. So the bottom of the pyramid are items that are cheaper, more do-it-yourself friendly, but they save less energy, save less carbon, um, have less cost savings, and they don't always help with comfort. And typically, as we go up the pyramid, it gets more expensive to do, 
takes more work, less do-it-yourself friendly, but it saves much more energy, much more carbon, and can improve uh, comfort significantly. So just in the chat here, real briefly, here is a list of all the items we're going to talk about. And maybe you just want to list out an order from, again, the bottom to the top. Maybe just list out the one you think that's at the bottom, one you think that's in the middle, and one you think that might be at the top, however you want to do it. Just take a second here to look at all these and think about where do they belong sort of in the average home uh, when someone typically comes across a, a home um, improvement project. I would argue that no matter what the answer is, um, that having an awareness and a foundational understanding is always the first place to start. And that's why you're all here, right? I mean, ultimately, that's what we're here to do is to start this conversation about what can work with homes and where do we go from here. So I would argue this is the first place to start. And, and in the past, there, there wasn't really a way to do this unless it was provided by the local city or state government or county, which many have led across the country, and we appreciate that. But now we do have federal action on this first rung of the pyramid. Up to $150 tax credit or 30% of the cost for uh, an energy audit. And they're still defining what an energy audit is and what it looks like. Uh, but we think we have some ideas that you can start on right now that will get you a head start. But before we get started on that, just another quick poll here for everybody. Um, the question being uh, is, you know, who has used or con uses energy audits to make informed decisions on your project? So again, if you're out there working with clients, doing projects, are you using audits before you do work, uh, before you make a decision? Or if you're an individual coming at this and you're planning a project or done a project, you know, did you get an audit done first or are you, you know, planning an audit? And maybe you're in both buckets, so you can only click one, but... <laughs> All right, so we've got about half the audience in, and so here are the results. It looks like we've got a pretty nice, even across the board um, uh, answer to everything with the with the bulk of people being doing audits on some projects. So what we hope is that this tax credit, this incentive um, will spur you know more action to do that. Um, and then further incentives and in, in using the braided funding approach with other local programs uh, can help, um, you know, do do more from there. Um, all right. So again, what is an energy audit? We would argue, and again, the rules are not there, but we would argue that part of the energy audit, other than, you know, the certified and trained professional either probably most likely through building performance institute or a hers rater or passive house rater even better um you know should be doing um blower door testing as well now there are reasons you don't do blower door testing um or the red door of truth as we call it because um because of asbestos you might shake it loose and cause a health problem so you'll learn that in your trainings you don't want to be involved in doing that or be uh, you don't want to be responsible for that. So, you know, you might have to clear the asbestos out, get it safe, and then come in and do it. Um, but we would argue that that should be done. Whether the tax credit's going to make you do that or not, I don't know. But let's assume that it will. You should start getting teed up to do these. Uh, I think it's very important. Now, next, you want to have some sort of energy rating that's done that is uniform that's easy to understand uh and so you know we would ultimately argue that the department of energy's home energy score would be the best tool to do that um and so we can help get your folks trained on that get people trained um there's even uh, we're going to do uh, a, a training on the do it yourself version of this though uh, there's a link to that now. You can there's an open source version of it that you can take a look at now and run uncertified scores. I just posted a link to that at uh, guest.hesscore.labworks.org at guest access. Um, and you can play around with it, um, but you do ultimately have to be certified for it. 
uh, to produce a certified score. And so again, what are the ideas of a score? It's kind of like a home inspection, um, but it's, you know, it's, um, it's looking at energy efficiency specifically, and it's giving you an easy to understand, like a one through 10 rating, how much the client's energy bills are going to be currently, how much their total energy use will be currently, and how much it will be with certain improvements. And then it will help kind of put together a list of the features and then what, uh, where, how that energy breaks down between electric and gas or um, propane or oil or whatever you use. Uh, and then also a list of things to improve, how much money it will save and when they should be improved. So again, you, you yourself are getting this done to your home or you're working with your clients to do this before you start your project, before you start your planning. This is very important. So you can uh, go to, uh, we're, we're building out our Find a Pro page to build out all of our assessors. It's still under construction right now, but you can always go over to um, the um, DOE's website, Better Buildings website, and you can find a local home energy score assessor to help you out. We'll help you find one too. Um, and we also do trainings to bring people on to be able to do these assessments um, all over the country as well. So again, you know, will the will will the will the program require a home energy score? Probably not, but we would argue that this is a federal program, it's already recognized and it's probably good enough. It's definitely going to be good enough to my knowledge uh as probably a viable way to put together what you need that's easy to communicate to clients uh and it's, you know, backed directly by the um the federal government. You could probably also use a HERS rating, um, but it would certainly just be, uh, unless you're doing a gut rehab, an over overkill for the information that you need um, for an existing, a small existing home um, project. But most likely that would be, you know, more than enough. And then we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but in, if it's the assessor or a heating and cooling contractor, the awareness stage is a great time to get the contractors in and to put a, a load calculation. And so the contractor can take the home energy score assessor report, and this is what I did with my house, and then they can use the blower door test data and some of the other data to then, uh, uh, and then a little more data the contractor collects, the HVAC, to create a manual J version eight. So that way, this is important, that when the heating and cooling system does need to be changed, they have one that's ready to go, that's not oversized, and that's, you know, built out for the project. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but we would highly uh, recommend that that be done in junction with the home energy score assessment. But again, not required for the tax credit, just a suggestion. Okay, so next on our list is low hanging fruit. So if you had thought low hanging fruit was first, we'd forgive you because first was very low. This is the second lowest. <laughs> uh, and these are just all the simple little things. We're not going to get into a lot of detail here. Get LED light bulbs, caulk things, use smart thermostats, put in um, power strips, all these little tiny things. A lot of it's do-it-yourself friendly um, as well. And uh, also, you know, um, putting in uh, what passive solar items that you could do. Someone suggested building awnings on the exterior of a home if necessary. That was interesting. I didn't think about that. That could work too. Uh, all these little things that can be done, they don't save much energy, but they can be done. And what you should know is that the tax credit to some extent can pay for the ones that are relevant to insulation and air sealing such as foaming or caulking or duct sealing, you name it. Um, pipe wrap could be an insulation of sort, but it has to have a manufacturer's certification statement. I don't know what that is, but I do go around manufacturer's sites and ever since IRA passed, suddenly these manufacturer's certification statements have sprung up like magic. <laughs> and so they're there, uh, but this is the exact text that I see uh, now, so now the whatever it means, you know, maybe the IRS has to define it a little bit more, but that is something you'll need to hold your client. You or your client will need to have access to if they were to get audited by the IRS uh, for claiming um, credit for that. All right, appliances and electrical. I'm going to keep these ones together for a certain reason, and you'll see why. Um, first of all, using the most energy efficient, highest tier appliances 
that's you know that should go without saying um but specifically what i want to cover here today is uh heat pump um um dryers why should you upgrade to an energy star certified heat pump dryer well if you want to get technical let's look at Hi, everybody. It sounds like you can't hear this video, um, and that's okay. So basically, a, a heat pump dryer is kind of the direction we need to go, and the new tax credits are going to help fund these heat pump dryers. Um, but... Uh, I was now that's a good use of hot air. So remember, while on the outside, this dryer may look the same as other dryers, because the heat pump technology on the inside uses 50% less energy, and that's 100% great for us and the environment. Find your Energy Star certified heat pump dryer, energystar.gov slash HP dryer. One day, everybody, I promise you, I'll learn how to use a... Uh videos on this thing <laughs> uh thanks for your help uh i think i learned something though um so you know uh again there are no specific rebates for any appliances but 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 this is something you want to encourage you know you and your clients that you're working with to switch to or all electric condensing dryers get rid of the pipe it's a it, you can air seal it up it's a pest entry and another problem i've been using a condensing dryer uh, for for a decade now, I didn't spring for the heat pump. I regret it. Um, but heat pump dryers are also condensing dryers, and they're much more um, energy efficient. And I'll get into you know where the tax credits come into place for this. Next, uh, if you've seen the news, um, who would have thought you know over the Christmas holiday, all of a sudden you know electric and induction cooking. Gas cooking would be front and center. I've been talking about it for a long time. Many of you have. And now all of a sudden, we're all talking about it, which is just fantastic. So I'm not going to go much further than that to say we know from a health standpoint, it's not safe to cook with gas. And we know many people uh, uh, practically are preferring to cook with induction. They're saying it's better. Uh, chefs are saying it's better. You name it. And so switching people to electric cooking and especially induction cooking is going to save a lot of energy if they're afraid they can buy these cheap little top plates and they can test it out some libraries and government agencies are giving these out or renting them out and having people try them out so that's pretty cool um as well so where i'm going at with all this is right now you you may need you or your client may need to upgrade their electrical systems to get this heat pump dryer to get the 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 induction stove and to get some of the other goodies we're going to be talking about so uh they they will need help here right there's going to be a cost to improving all these electrical systems and so right now we're looking at about a 30 percent up to 600 uh uh potential uh tax credit back um uh you know for doing this it, it includes improvement to the panel board sub panel board branch circuits or feeder wires, and it has to be installed in a manner consistent with the National Electric Code and has a load cap capacity of not less than 200 amps and installed with the injunction with that enable the installation of a qualified energy efficiency improvement or any qualified property uh, like a heat pump air conditioning uh, item uh, such as that. So it has to be tied into something uh, that you know is is tied into the uh the tax credit and also you know switching to electric vehicles i can tell you i went half electric and saved so much money as gas costs inflated significantly and it's so much nicer to charge at home less health issues uh so again this is a home energy uh session not a vehicle session but you know, having the electric charging stations in a, in a home does encourage people potentially to drive electric. It's one big barrier. So again, there are now through this this tax credit uh, up to a thousand dollars back 
to do the electric charging stations. Many of the utilities, I know in Consumers Energy in Michigan, are giving out a ton of money. And then also it could pair, I believe, with this one to some extent. So there's a ton of money out there to help people get these installed in their projects. And so you should make it part of your um, improvement um, program. And, and, and there's an update in the chat from consumers. So thanks for that shout out. <laughs> um, all right, so moving on, water heating. Um, so first and foremost, you can get uh, sealed combustion water heaters, very important. We want to keep, we don't want to, right? What is rule number one? Don't kill your clients right, or yourself. Right? And so we don't want toxic emissions coming out in the people's homes. So by having a sealed combustion, this is a health opportunity, but it also saves energy. So if you got to stick with gas for whatever reason, I don't know, uh, then here are the efficiency targets, 0.81 UEF for, um, uh, uh, for for tanks that are less than 55 gallons and 0.86 for ones uh, that are uh, 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 um, 55 gallons or higher. And then point, that's supposed to be a point there, 0.95 UEF for the um, wall mounted or the uh, um, uh, tankless ones uh, for gas water heating. Um, so again, pretty high efficiency to score that tax credit. Uh, and there's only up to $600 uh, for that. So what is the future though? We know the future is the heat pump water heater. Uh, I've personally had one now uh, since 2018 uh, and I've loved every minute of it. I've used it and it works really well and I can use it for time of use programs and um, my costs didn't go up anymore by switching, even though electric rates are a little bit higher than gas or they used to be, my costs never went up. And and now you or your clients can get up to a $2,000 tax credit or 30% back for the Inflation Reduction Act under this one for the water heater. So it's a big boost. And am I bitter? Am I angry? You know, maybe a little bit. I didn't get a tax credit for doing this. Um, so I'm a little mad, but I'm going to swallow it and I'm going to continue to help um, educate people <laughs> about these things. Um, so that's out there. And the way you know we have a whole uh, lot of education and training on how these things work, but they can be up to 400% energy efficiency. Um, and if you go to the DOE, uh, the uh, the Energy Star website, they have a whole great list of, um, you know, all the ones that are approved for it. Uh, and so just to be clear, it's 30% up to $2,000. So whichever uh, is higher uh, for your project. So if if it's not quite $2,000, isn't, isn't the 30%, then, uh, or sorry, let me take a step back here. All of these tax credits are, if it's a thousand dollars, if let's say this was a thousand, which we know it's not, if this was a thousand dollars to buy and install, you would get 300 back for it that you or your client, that's it. You couldn't get 2000. So, you know, you do the math from, from there. So all right, next on the list. And, and to also to be clear, you know, Anything I have on this list for this pyramid, you know, if you have a failing water heater, this is going to be on the bottom of your list. You don't care about an energy audit, right? You don't care about all the other things. You just need a water heater now. So this is why we're encouraging people to reach out to their contractors and, and to get this a bid and a quote going now. These take time to order. You don't want to be trying to order a heat pump water heater when your water heater is leaking because tell you what, it's going to be hard to get. You know, in fairness, they're hard to get because uh, everybody wants them. So you want to have a plan in place now, maybe replace it or work with your client and their project to replace it before it breaks. Insulation and air sealing. I'm going to do these together. Um, typically, you always want to air seal first before you lay down insulation, and then you want to insulate over top of it. Um, otherwise you cause convective looping and all sorts of other comfort issues and problems. And it's just a real shame to see uh, poor insulation jobs that don't have air sealing done before them. So I'm merging them together for the sake of our conversation, but air sealing always needs to get done first and then you insulate um, and, and, and never forget that. So you get up to 30% again for air sealing and insulation. It says insulation on the actual tax credit language, but it's also for air sealing. So from top to bottom, from all around, every home needs um, 
air sealing. There's air leaking all over the place, causing stack effects, causing discomfort for you in your clients. Uh, the other thing about air sealing is that it's a humidity problem, right? It brings in humidity in the summer when you don't want it, mold, mildew, and it drives humidity out in the wintertime when you do need it. And, you know, there's evidence to show that the flu and COVID is worse. It, you can catch it more. It could be more dangerous when you have lower humidity. So you want good humidity, decent in the middle, right? And so air sealing is a health issue. Plus, if you have leaky, you or your clients have leaking walls, that can bring in rot, mold, you know, pest droppings, bug droppings, and again, diminish the air quality. So this is a real health problem. It's not just an energy problem. So we need our health providers engaged in this work, and we're working on that too. All right. And then after you air seal, you want to insulate from top to bottom. Now I get it. Insulating the bottom on an existing home, very expensive, very little return. And getting into the walls, very expensive, very little return. And it can cause moisture and durability issues if you screw it up. So typically laying the attic insulation right down as much as you can, insulating the rim band joists as much as you can, uh, great. Uh, basement walls, maybe. Uh, that's why you use the home energy score tool to determine cost effectiveness and payback on those things to be to make an informed decision. Uh, and then now they've chucked in doors. So get the fiberglass door works great. 30% uh, or $250 per door up to $500. So this is a great time to get, I'm looking at this one. I, I got some old metal doors. I'm looking at fiberglass. I had a fiberglass before. I loved it. Um, and again, manufacturer's statement, whatever you're using for air sealing and insulation, make sure they're stating that it is certified, <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, we'll, we'll hopefully, uh, you know, find out um, a little bit more in the future on that. So, um, and there was a question in here and I forgot to bring it up at the beginning, but uh, new construction uh, is for the 45L program. So we're going to be talking about that in a little bit. And we talked about it in the past, um, but uh, it is, but this, to my knowledge, this is does not qualify for 45L and it does not qualify um, for rentals. This has to be the home you own or the clients you're helping's home that they own. Uh, it's not for rental units um, and it's not for new construction, the things we're talking about today. All right, so again, HVAC. HVAC, you know, you want to do it after you air seal or insulate, or as our found as our founder said, you're just um you're just uh uh, uh heating and cooling um uh, uh uh more inefficiently, if you will, if you don't air seal and insulate first uh before you do the HVAC. Plus, you can downsize the HVAC system through the heat load calculation that you you all of you are going to go out and get, right? You're all going to go get one. Your clients are going to go get one. You're going to con convince them to go get it. And to make sure they're ready for when their system fails, that they have a backup plan to implement for a better heating and cooling system that's approved for the tax credit, that's right-sized for the home, and it's ready to go. And you want to get that calc done now through the home energy audit through connection with your home energy with your HVAC contractor to make sure it's right sized and not oversized. Um, another issue with uh, oversized air conditioning systems and one potential issue with this with even the Inflation Reduction Act requirements that we're understanding is that um, if you don't right size your system, you could have humidity issues uh, in the summertime when the air conditioning isn't running constantly, which is a good thing. You want it doing that. So you want to get the right systems in place. You want to act now because when when does the furnace fail? It fails during the damn snowstorm when you're having a, 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 a blizzard and, and the temperature is below sub-zero. That's when the damn furnace fails. And when when does your fucking air conditioning <laughs> fail? I mean, it fails when uh when you're having a heat wave which there's going to be a lot more heat waves i hate to break it to you all but it, sadly we we're getting heat waves all the time even in the winter so they're coming and so that's when the acs fail so get ready now uh for that so here's what's available um it, i don't know if you can see that but anyway it's it's 97 afue or higher on the on the furnace 
sealed combustion, you know, that should be go without saying 16 sear or higher on the uh on the um air conditioning system and uh uh and you know pretty straightforward six hundred dollars and that's six hundred dollars not for each but six hundred dollars in totality um you know for this now what we need to go is heat pump and you know i have a heat pump uh and i went full heat pump uh, air source heat pump, cold weather climate certified heat pump. And they're giving out the big bucks for that. So it's still 30% of the cost, but they'll give up to $2,000 for the heat pump. And it has to be uh, both the outdoor condenser and the indoor condenser. It can be a mini split. It can be a ducted system, which can which I did. I just swapped out the gas, popped in the uh, condenser or popped in the, uh, the uh, inside unit and boom, you know, it was like magic, just in and out and, uh, and then put the outdoor condenser where the air conditioning was. And so you can do that. You can do, like I said, ductless, you can do ducted mini split, whatever strategy you want to use with your client. So this is up to $2,000 uh, to, to, to do that. And so the, the federal government uh, on the Energy Star site has some really good, it tells you exactly what qualifies depending on what system type it is for the SEER and the EER and the HSPF. Uh, so you can go in and read about that. They also have a link you can click that downloads a document. But let me tell you, it is missing so much information. So many great, uh, so many great uh, 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 manufacturers are missing from it. It's kind of embarrassing. And 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 somebody admitted to me, uh, they said, you know, it's just a it's just a mess. They said. And so what I'll say is that one of our favorite lists that we looked at, but you can look at any manufacturing list. Um, was the Mitsubishi list here. There's a direct link to that. And what my understanding is, is that it kind of just goes down pretty far with all different types of choices of the indoor unit paired with the outdoor unit and what you want to use in the South versus the North for, um, for uh, you know, for um, a qualified product. And the North being cold weather climate certified one. So a lot of manufacturers now have these. I wanted to show you this example and our hope is we can all put pressure on DOE and they'll put pressure on DOE to build this out real nice so you can download it and they keep it up to date to see what qualifies um, you know, for the heat pump. Now, let's shift gears here over, over to the renewable energy, 30% tax credit for ground source heat pumps, also known as geothermal HVAC. So this has no limit, right? This is a full 30% credit non-refundable tax credit for geothermal. And so geothermal is much more expensive because you got to do the drilling. And if you drill out um, uh, vertical, like in this photo here, if you can see that, it looks like maybe part of the photo is missing, but in the hand handout, you have it. If you drill down, it costs a lot more money. It's a little more efficient. You don't have to kill trees. But when you bore out uh, horizontal, it costs less money, but you have to have a lot of land. So there are limitations in city lots but there's no doubt that you know ground source heat pumps are the number one energy efficient heating and cooling system. There's no outdoor condenser. You can use D superheaters with them to heat the water as well. Uh, and so they're giving out really big money for that uh, as they did in the past. And also they have some more complex rules for you doing multifamily housing. So I put a link to that in there too. Um, uh, over at the International Ground Source Heat Pump Association. You can check those out, but they have the 30% credit plus more than that too um, as well. Dual fuel. I was, you know, scrambling before this webinar to figure out, hey, can I just put an outdoor heat pump and pair it with my existing gas furnace or new furnace? Because that's going to be a lot more practical for people to make the transition, especially in cold weather climate states with high electric rates. You've got a furnace, you like it, it works. Great. Let's just plug in a heat pump and use it, you know, until it gets too cold. My understanding is sadly that will not get you the $2,000 tax credit taking that approach, but more information is needed. So right now I believe that can only get you up to the 30% or $600 credit if you meet the air conditioning requirements for the outdoor heat pump and pair the two together to have the sort of dual fuel approach. Windows, right? 
what what are the, the window salesmen? They go around, they say you're going to save so much energy, 50%, 90%, 140%. You generate energy with windows. It's all magic, right? And we all know that's bunk. You barely save energy, any energy switching to windows in an existing home. It's one of the last things you want to do. The only time you want to really replace a window is when there's a gaping hole in it or it's got a water failure. Uh, or, you know, again, it's very aesthetics. It has nothing to do with energy efficiency. It's aesthetics. It will save energy, not saying it won't. I'm just saying in proportion to everything else that you can do, it doesn't save much. And it costs so much money, right? It's just, even this rebate here only gets you, um, only gets you up to $600 for the windows. How much is a $600 window package, right? Even if you replace one window with your client every year for the next 13 years or however many, you know, 10 years, it just, any it barely makes it. So when you're doing windows, um, most of what I've saw is 0.2 U value, but that changes by climate. And then the solar heat gain coefficient requirements change significantly by climate. And then they have to have the national fenestration rating and the energy leak um, reduction rating for the windows. Um, but what we did learn is that um, internal storm windows or exterior storm windows can potentially also uh, be applicable for the tax credit. And these are significantly cheaper. Some of these you can like go and measure yourself. They'll send you a measuring kit. They'll send it to you and you can just pop it in or work with your client to pop it in. And that can save a ton of energy. Uh, reduce air significantly leaking through the building and uh, through the windows. And it works very well. And so unless you have a total window failure, this is one way to save energy. And apparently it could be um, available for achieving the same tax credit uh, that traditional um, you know, windows, windows can get. All right, so we wrapped up all the home energy efficiency items. Um, and we're going to talk briefly about the top of the pyramid. I've got the wrong graphic here. It's pretty close, uh, but whatever. Still solar at the top. Um, I know for those of you who uh, need to get going, uh, that's fine. You are approved for your continuing ed, but we're going to keep hanging out here, having conversation, finishing it off with the solar power and geothermal discuss or solar power discussion. But again, this session is recorded, so you'll be able to catch it on our website um, uh, in a couple days. For those of you watching this in the future, on demand, not right now, take the quiz with a 10% passing rate and you'll get your certificate. Um, for those of you who were here uh, for the bulk uh, for the entire hour, check your spam for certs at gutenbergcerts.com. Mark that as safe and you'll take the, the survey that comes to you and you'll get your, your CEUs that way. And again, um, for those of you got to get going, um, thank you for joining us. We're going to keep going, keep answering more questions. But I just want to give a big shout out to our board of directors, our volunteers, uh, our nearly uh, 300 member members, especially all of our uh, female members and uh, 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 in, in honor of um, International Women's Day, 30% of them. Uh, of our members are women in almost directly or indirectly in construction. And a huge thanks to our sponsors, um, Mitsubishi, Reem, April Air, all of our other sponsors. They have all sorts of great products that will help you uh, and your clients achieve, get these tax credits and make their homes, you know, more energy efficient and ultimately better. Um, so again, we got through all the home energy stuff and now we're talking about solar power. And the solar power tax credit has been significantly boosted. Like I said, I have personally got the entire tax credit, so I know that it works. Um, didn't think I was going to get it uh, at my income level, <laughs> but uh, 30%. And that's a tax deduction that's still non-refundable, but it can carry over for the life of the Inflation Reduction Act law of like 10 years or so. So if you can't, and this is what I did. I got half of it in one year and then half in the second year. And so if you or your clients are looking to get this, it can carry over year by year by year and you can get some benefits. It's not paid out up front. Um, but again, um, they have the tax credit for solar power. And this is out, the solar tax credit and the geothermal tax credit sit outside of the other tax credits. So you can submit them 
to my knowledge, and check with your tax advisor in tandem together. They're not intertwined or connected to each other. Um, and then also what we've learned is that for multifamily housing, there are significant bonuses above the 30% uh, for not, and even nonprofits can get these bonuses somehow. Uh, and uh, low income housing, low income communities or housing can also get additional bonuses. So, we're going to be doing for future webinars on that and what that means and releasing some information on that. Um, I've got a link to one of the recent ones that just came out from uh, Enterprise Community Partners. Uh, if you go to their blog, you can see um, some guidance for low-income um, uh, projects, multifamily projects. And then I saw another one come out um, for um, uh, nonprofits uh, on LinkedIn from our friends at the uh, uh, the clean energy folks. Um, so there's a link to that there too. So solar power, uh, you know, work as I come to you live broadcasting on this, I'm currently running 100% off solar power as these sunny days are coming. So um, it works. Solar works in cold climates. Uh, batteries, you know, batteries have been a part of the tax credit, but the difference was the battery had to be tied to the uh, solar power. It couldn't be tied directly to the grid and port energy from the grid. So this is our accountant, Tim. We have a solar powered battery powered accountant too, right? We're trying to reduce our carbon, our scope one carbon emission. Yeah, we don't track them. Maybe we will, but we have a solar powered uh, tech uh, 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 and, and battery powered accountant. I've got a battery. Um, and so now there's a direct deduction to my knowledge uh, for the battery itself, even if it's not conjoined with the solar. And if it's just, you know, if it can pull energy from the grid and feed it back Typically, what you might do with a battery is pull energy from the grid at night when it's cheaper, more wind, more nuclear. Not going to go down the nuclear rabbit hole here, but it is less carbon. But whatever. Uh, and then, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then it can feed back during the day during the more expensive rates, and then be a backup resiliency. So that's another additional, uh, to my knowledge, um, tax credit. And how those two get claimed in unison, I don't know. Uh, you'll have to check with your um, your tax advisor on that. Um, so again, I'll leave you with the the awareness, the understanding. It's the year 2023, early in the year as I record this, so we're all just getting started. And the reality is we need to go out and we need to evaluate millions and millions of existing homes to cut our carbon, to improve people's health and their well-being, to improve our housing stock, we got to get out there and we got to get assessors out evaluating homes, helping people make decisions and informed choices uh, about what to do and how to take advantage of these tax credits and other resources that are out there. We just need to start evaluating them and, and having conversations. So let's get to work uh, on that. And I encourage you all to work with us to do that or whoever you're working with that's great. And now there's a tax credit for it. So let's start there. You know, let's get out there and let's do the work. So um, I hope you'll join us and 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 thanks for for attending today. So um, I see a lot of questions here and I'm going to hang out for a little while and answer the questions until my voice completely goes under. It's starting to get shot. <laughs> uh, but uh, so let's see here. What are your thoughts on the risk of a different income in government in 2024 canceling IRA incentives? Yeah, that would be that would be very sad um, if that were to happen. And I don't know if that can happen or how that all works or or what. So um, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, from what I can tell, we have to go in the other direction. The IRA has to be defined better and ultimately the states need to ensure that the especially on the housing side these funds need to be adopted and equitably distributed into communities who typically have been left out of federal programs frontline communities communities of color low income communities and the rebates specifically were designed for low to moderate income people um but ultimately we want to make sure that it's going to help people who typically have been left out so 
that's what our hope is. Um, and, and, and we hope we can, we can do that. So, um, so yeah, so the, the, the homes rebate that's coming, there is an energy modeling, um, pathway that's coming. And one of my favorite articles on that is from our good friends at snug pro and they wrote an article and then they did the right thing. And when information changed, they went in and updated the article. And I assume they'll continue to do that. So I've been keeping this one bookmarked uh, on my, um, uh, and I'll post it into the chat here, but I've been keeping this one um, uh, bookmarked here because it's, it's, it's a very well-written, very detailed for sure article about the um, energy auditing approach so there's you know there's always in programs um there's a performance and prescriptive so we talked a lot about prescriptive uh, incentives today and then the big rebates that are coming out very prescriptive but for those who uh, make too much money to qualify for the big rebates there is up to four thousand um, dollars through an energy modeling rebate uh, and so if you go to snugpro.com and look at their blog under what the homes rebate program meets for state uh, home performance industry, they give you some detail on what they think will happen um, with that program through the IRA and through um, everything. We're a DOE Home Energy Score partner, so we're in talks with them about the integration of that. One thing that has to happen is it has to follow a BPI protocol that basically uses an evaluation of the home as an asset and then uses the utility bills of the home and merges the two together, which is what Stug Pro does. Um, and so we're looking at that. But um, and then it helps you make a better decision based on like, you know, building science asset related through the home energy score, maybe, and then incorporating the utility data uh as well and you kind of unify the two together um which gets you even more information on what to do and then from there it has to have a certain energy savings in to qualify the upgrade upwards of i've heard 35 percent. so i think it's a, a a great approach uh it still funds gas systems for better or for worse um and we just have a lot more information we just don't know yet but we ultimately think if you are gearing up for home energy score, you're headed in the right direction. Um, and then, uh, you know, anything that can incorporate the utility data into the rating um, is going to be the best way to, to go. On the flip side of that, they also are looking at real world data. Uh, uh, so real utility data, like what were the end results and paying out the rebate based on that. So like Open EE, I believe, is the organization doing that. And so what I really like about that is it's like they, you know, uh, one of the one of the criticisms of the home energy rebates programs in the past is that we've had all these people making all these promises and then they never amounted to anything. They never hit the targets they, you know, said they would hit. So uh, these these other concepts that are being piloted in California and other states where they pay the rebate based on the actual results of the energy savings, not on the predicted results, which is really interesting. And here's my criticism is that I don't know how many people are going to make financial decisions um, necessarily uh, re if they need the rebate. Are they going to make a financial decision based on um, um, real energy results? Because I get a lot of pushback, like, well, what if the weather changes? Or what if I start a business in my house? Or what if I do whatever? It's going to drive my usage up, and that won't be fair. I get an electric car, all of a sudden my usage skyrockets. Now carbon goes down and costs go down. But um, And so there's a lot of unanswered questions there on how that will work. I think the concept is interesting, getting paid for performance. I think it's where we have to go. It's just how do we get there? So I'm excited to see. And we'll be we'll be here next year doing a webinar on it. You'll all you'll be hanging out. So uh yeah, and I see a, a comment in the link um for uh the open ee um ifenergy.org. And I think there's some other information. So thank you. Um 
And again, just a reminder, the 25C, what we talked about today, cannot be used for new construction, cannot be used for rentals. The solar uh, energy tax credit can be used for new construction, can be used for rentals. Um, so that's good. Um, and the geothermal, I believe, can be used for new construction, but can't be used for rentals. But then there's the business side of it. So uh, there's a lot of things we need to to figure out. So, uh, and then there, uh, uh, we talked about the rollover. So uh, I, I think I answered that one. I'm going to kind of drop to the bottom here and look at some of the new questions that came in because some of these things uh, I've already answered. So there's a question about solar thermal, and clearly solar thermal is. Um, on that list, and I chose to ignore it for multiple reasons. Um, one of the reasons is because I do believe it is a dead thing. Um, but I'd love to see someone prove me wrong. I think it works at large utility scale, but we don't see any of the solar installers um, installing it anymore. And the same goes with small residential wind. That's a dead thing as well, as far as I can tell. There are applications for both of those in some instances, but for the most part, we don't see them, but you can get the, the tax credit for them. I just don't know if they'll ever have a payback if not done um, you know, correctly. So, um, Many of the solar bonuses credits are for megawatt size projects, good sources for the solar credit for your future. Yeah, so we you know, try to stay away from utility and commercial scale but there absolutely is a solar tax credit and I've gotten it um, for housing and for multifamily that is not on the massive scale. So there are credits for solar. You know, the Inflation Reduction Act is a huge bill and I don't even want to even think about many of the aspects of it. I, it's great, but I don't get I don't get paid enough to know about the other aspects of it, nor do I care or have time. I'm glad for that. So when it gets into you know industrial solar and utility solar, I don't care. I'm glad it's out there. And thank you for informing me and good luck with that. <laughs> so I don't know anything about it. Um, and I'll just admit you know what I don't know. So for anyone who wants to share those resources, I appreciate it. Um, and there was a question about the resource list about the green banks. You know, I just saw a coalition that's forming and it had three green banks. It had Michigan Saves, one out of Colorado, and then maybe one or two others. Um, and I and I and I bookmarked the link, but I don't have it right now. Um, I don't know if there's a great great source to find these green banks or not, but if you type in your state that you work in and you put in Green Bank, um, you know, you might be able to find it. Um, but I know there is a coalition now forming to sort of unify the banks. One of the things that happened with the Inflation Reduction Act is they're just pumping dollars to start these green banks or bolster the green banks. So hopefully you'll start to see more and more of these green banks uh, forming to, uh, to um, you know, to help people out uh, access capital. Uh, there's also property assessed clean energy or PACE, um, which is popular for multifamily here in Michigan. And if you look the, at the news in California, Florida, and Missouri has had a lot of issues on residential, mostly because scam people aren't doing the energy modeling appropriately and they're forecasting better predictions than are true. So once we weed those folks out, I think PACE could work very well for residential um, but you just have to make sure that we're protecting people um, from the damages of having liens put on their home if the energy efficiency savings don't accrue, which has been, I think, politically, people don't want to touch. I know Michigan, we've been using a lot of pace and won't touch residential at all for whatever reason. So, uh, But that's another kind of form of a green bank, um, too. Um, there was some questions here about the battery storage system. You'll have to go into Energy Star's website and learn a little bit more. Um, but I do believe it must be connected to the utility. Uh, I don't believe it can be a standalone. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, but I do know there's also microgrid funds and all that other stuff. So uh, something we haven't looked into. Um I don't see any other. So there's a question here about nonprofits 
uh, getting IRA benefits. So they are working, again, they are working to clean up the lack of funds for nonprofits and those nonprofits developing low income housing to benefit. And, you know, my initial output of feelers on certain IRA funds that I've put, you know, it's basically like, no, we can't use this. Or, and some people say that they're very adamant. My tax person said we can't use it. Others have told me they can maybe use it. Um, one thing that it does for the low income housing tax credit programs is that it does prevent those from being harmed like they were in the past. So that's a good sign. And we'll do more education on that. One thing you also have to know when you send, and this is what I've learned in practice over many years, when you send a, a, an energy tax credit to a tax advisor, and more often than not, they will say no. And the reason they say no is because they don't understand how the energy programs work. And they know they shouldn't, right? Well, they should now, but that's not their job to understand how the DOE Zero Energy Ready Certification Program works. But that's what happens when you send one of these programs to them, or even this one. They might go, I don't understand insulation. So therefore you can't get the credit. And, and that's sadly the feedback we've been receiving over many years, and it's only gone up through the roof since IRA. And the so so the you know, we got to get these tax folks educated, we got to get them trained. Uh, we're working on getting our tax advisor trained, maybe to help you all out if you need it. But it's like at some point they have to like, I'm not stepping on their toes telling you all how to do your taxes. I'm gonna say, hey go talk to them. And they need to say the same thing. Hey, I don't understand the level of insulation or the U value you need. I don't get that. But I see that you meet these other things. So you're in, but sadly they misrepresent their lack of understanding of energy to mean that you don't qualify. And that's been a sad experience that I have found more often than not with these tax advisors, or maybe it's that they don't want to do it. They don't want to, they don't want to take on the liability I know I want to give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt, but it's been very frustrating. Um, so a lot of our nonprofit tax advisors basically just say no all the time. Uh, they're very good at saying no, <laughs> but we don't know how true that is. Um, so, so yeah. Um, uh, there's a question here about air tightness for windows. And I believe that is a component of the requirements for the Energy Star certification. So it does have to have those airtight um improvement so um and then the question here about rebates in the low income area so again that goes back to the hera h e e r a that is the tax credit that is meant for low income residents now this tax credit can be used for low income residents and i would even argue many who didn't think they could benefit from it can benefit. But the problem with the 25 home C tax credit, especially for people who are experiencing poverty, is that you don't get the money potentially until you have a deduction, number one, that's a barrier. And then number two, until you, um, and it's not until the year later. So a lot of people can't out of pocket pay for the upfront cost of this stuff and they're you know too afraid to take on loans and debt i just read that we have some of the highest credit card debt now ever and so we certainly don't want to encourage people to put themselves in debt to do this though sometimes that is necessary so it is something that you know home people in experiencing poverty will not benefit from at least the one i'm talking about but the other one that's coming out up to you know fourteen thousand dollars potentially of tax credits is specifically made for low income. And you make some good observations about like outdoor equipment being broken into and stolen. And so you might have to pay a little bit more money to secure things. And does the tax credit pay for the security? That's a good question. I don't know if anyone's answered that. And so somebody should ask that to the IRS and the DOE, and then ultimately the state, hey, if we need whatever, we need to put a heat pump in a cage, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, which is unfortunate, but does that get covered in the tax credit cost? I think that's a good observation. So thank you for, for putting that out there. Um, there's still a lot of other questions here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of uh, try to compile 
some of these questions and, you know, maybe send out a response to everybody on what I might know and what ultimately I should have said at the beginning, there's still many things that, um, you know, we just simply don't know. And so we'll be doing more educational sessions, maybe having some folks on from uh, other professionals who know more about this, you know, doing case studies of people who have gotten these this money and how they did it. And we'll be talking about the new tax credits as well as they come out and sharing out resources on our website and our blog and our YouTube channel uh, as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here, but I appreciate everyone uh, not only for joining, but asking um, great questions and adding your own thoughts and feedback into how you view this. Your opinion is, is awesome and we really appreciate it because a lot of you know a lot more than I do. So um, I'm excited to have you all back out again um, for another IRA session. Um, but otherwise, we're going to wrap up here today. Um, we'll be back on uh, next week talking about home value um, and what people um, have been surveyed in their own homes have learned about um, energy efficiency and what they know and don't know, because uh, we also need to work with realtors and appraisers um, to get these kinds of things going. So join us next week. Otherwise, take care. Have a great rest of your week and be well. Thank you. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.